You've reached part three, the end of all things. If you haven't seen parts one and two of this, I suggest you start there. April 30th, prediction 11. This time, Claudia couldn't even be bothered to wait for her previous prediction to fail. Maybe she was starting to just assume her predictions would fail, and she figured she should just push on to the next one to keep things timely. So here, she decides that her last prediction failed because it wasn't symmetrical enough. The first half of the tribulation is a mirror image of the second half. Meaning, her previous diagram had 1,335 days from the start of the tribulation until the middle of it. Or until the start of the middle, I should say. The actual middle would be halfway between the start of the middle to the end of the middle. That's how middles work. But it only had between 1,311 and 1,318 days from the end of the middle to the end of the end. It was just slightly asymmetrical. And since these numbers aren't the same, but should be, because, I don't know, that makes it look prettier when you draw it, I guess? Because reasons. The diagram should be corrected so there's 1,335 days on both sides of the middle. And then, because it looks tidier now, it's for sure gonna be right. Which makes sense. And so we tack on those extra 17 days or so to bring us up to 1335, and the rapture is gonna be on nice, symmetrical May 18th. So rapture said to occur on May 18th, 2020. Now, by this point, Claudia has a few Christian detractors insisting she can't know the day or hour, and all of this is disgusting blasphemy. But she's got a few words for those people. For those who prefer to believe that the date of the rapture cannot be known, the solution is quite obvious. Since the dates cannot be known, the dates given in the diagram in figure 2 cannot be correct. And therefore, you still do not know the day or the hour. In other words, if you think I'm stupid for trying to predict this over and over and over, even though the Bible says nobody will know the day or hour, nuh uh Because if the dates really can't be known, that means all my dates are bullshit, and so you don't know the day or hour, and so the thing in the Bible is totally true. Which is true enough, and I'm not sure how Claudia thinks that's an argument for her position. Claudia made a couple follow-up videos to add detail to her prediction and strengthen it. On May 16th, two days before the prediction was due to fail, she published some supporting evidence that May 18th was in fact the correct date. By using an improved time lag calculation, she discovered that May 18th in reality was March 21st, the actual first day of spring. May 18th is actually March 21st, the first the real first day of spring. The very slight problem that everyone was already experiencing a perfectly normal spring and had been for two months, despite a good chunk of that time supposedly being in the depths of winter, was apparently not worth considering, even though one of her original premises was how weird it was that summer was delayed for two months in Portugal in 2014, and that meant that time ever since then has been completely out of whack. But here we were having time seeming conspicuously in whack. In fact, in most places, most years it's been in whack. But that doesn't mean time's not broken, because Portugal still had weird weather six years ago. That of course must take precedence over all other evidence. A couple days later, as May 18th was starting to fade away, Claudia put another video out, declaring that no, no, the rapture still will be today, even though there's not much today left. Because you see, there are still some time zones on the planet where it's not May 19th. See, look, here's a map that shows some Pacific Islands. They've still got hours left. The uh, Howland and Baker Islands, two small islands in the Pacific, and these are the last place on Earth where any date exists. And, you know, it's not like God uses time zones in the Bible, so you don't know what time zone it's going to happen in. But you see, he's love itself, right? So he's going to want to give people as much time as they can to listen to Claudia and repent. Even if it's just a few extra hours, and it's not like he hasn't given people plenty of time already. God can thus select any time zone he prefers, and since he is love, it is likely that he will choose a later time zone rather than an earlier time zone. The desperation of Claudia at this point was palpable. May 19th, prediction 12. What? What do you mean it's not May 18th anymore? Yeah, yeah, it is. What about the Howland and Baker Islands? No, not even there. Shit. Okay, okay, well, um, it's because... 
Give me a second, would you? Since May 18th has now passed all over the Earth, so that the use of different time zones as an explanation for the delay is no longer possible, there has to be something else going on. Before she yet again reassesses her thus far catastrophically failed calculations, Claudia takes a moment to tout the amazing predictive power of her model thus far, which <laughs> I don't know how much I agree with that. And I suppose this is an attempt to salvage what's left of her reputation among the not all that hard to please end times fanatics who are not all entirely happy about this. Supposedly, her model correctly predicted the stopping of the sacrifice when that one arbitrary church branch was shut down for COVID. The use of these two-day counts worked perfectly during the first half, so that's uh, over here, and led to the finding of the church at which the sacrifice was stopped in South Korea. I don't know how she's confirmed that that actually was the stopping of the sacrifice, other than just assuming it. It also predicted that prediction being wildly off by 45 days. And it led to the understanding of the 45-day difference being due to a time lag period resulting from each day being shortened by 12 minutes per day since the sun went permanently dark in uh, or around 2001. And it predicted when the two witnesses, Claudia's YouTube channel and Claudia's website, would be set up. Which makes zero sense, considering that Claudia's YouTube channel was set up years before her website was. The use of the day counts, this time regarding the 1,260 days that the two witnesses testify for, also led to the correct determination of when the two witnesses were set to arrive or be set up, which was April 3rd, 2020. Now, of course, if her model does match any of this, it has absolutely nothing to do with the rampant post hoc rationalization, the cherry picking, the dates and numbers and events pulled straight from her feelings as butthole, and so on and so on. No, it's pure unadulterated science, baby! After she's presented this highly debatable list of her achievements, she gets into the excuse making. You see, her May 18th prediction relied on the rate of time lag staying constant. As it turns out, it's not that straightforward. But since that prediction failed miserably, and the fact that it failed doesn't indicate that all of this has been a pointless waste of time, but instead it indicates that the time lag has been sped up. The rapture not occurring at this time then suggests that the time lag has been accelerated beyond the average for the period. I would say it suggests a few other things, but that's okay, we'll go with your thing. That the time lag was sped up. Oh no, that means, that means another inevitable failure of a rapture prediction's on its way. So Claudia makes up some likely rates of change based on absolutely nothing. If the rate remained constant, the rapture would be on May 22nd. If the time lag remains constant, the total number of time lost by May 18th would have been 3.9 days, which would suggest that the rapture would not occur until four days after May 18th, 2020. But if it kept accelerating at the same rate as it did from the beginning of the second half of the tribulation, I'm not sure if that refers to the end of the middle or the middle of the middle, but at least half as measured from somewhere near the middle, then maybe the rapture could be like a few days later, let's say March 24th. But if the time lag keeps on accelerating at the same rate it did from the beginning of the second half of the tribulation, then it could be a few days longer. The rapture event would not occur for another six days after May 18, 2020, and thus not until May 24, 2020. Now, if the rate changed a little bit faster or a little bit slower, then yeah, it was possible that it could make the date a little earlier or later, but it was, quote, not likely to be possible to greatly increase them by many more days. It is possible that the initial acceleration was lower than the estimate resulting in the rapture occurring earlier than four days, and it is also possible that the acceleration did not remain constant, thus increasing the number of days beyond the estimated absolute maximum of six. However, it is not likely to be possible to greatly increase them by many more days. And if the rate changed wildly without any sort of pattern or limit imposed on it by Claudia, then for all we know it could be the 23rd century right now and we should all be cooking our steaks in the microwave. But that wasn't worth considering. 
because reasons. And if, God forbid, time lag wasn't a thing in the first place, no, it was a thing. Because the devil did it. Claudia searched her feelings and she knew it to be true. And so, as firmly established by the finest Planet X physics, the rapture had to be between May 22nd and 24th, plus or minus a few days. Cuz. Reasons. May 23rd, prediction 13, now come on. Once again, Claudia didn't even bother waiting around this time for the last prediction to fail before she came out with a new one. It was really starting to seem as if she was starting to give up on the idea that any given prediction would actually succeed. For this new prediction, her very scientific conclusion is based on another anecdote, similar to her story about summers in Portugal, except somehow even worse, since at least the relative heat of summer months is something other people could independently verify and a severe change in them would warrant an investigation into the cause, which generously, I guess we'll say, could be a Lucifer-induced time lag. Anyway, this story is about how on May 21st, Claudia didn't feel tired until way later than she normally would. On Thursday, May 21st, 2020, I got up at around 8 a.m. after a good night's sleep, since I had made an effort to go to bed at around midnight. And that takes some effort because usually I'm awake and want to work for much longer than that. So Claudia's normal daily schedule involves working until much later than midnight. And the night before, she'd pushed herself to go to bed early, get in there by midnight. It was a tough thing to do because she's so used to staying up later, but she did it anyway. Good job, Claudia. I then worked through the day and did not get tired until 2 a.m. the following morning. Knowing how my body works under these circumstances, I should have gotten tired by about 8 p.m., so about 12 hours after I got up. So strangely enough, even though Claudia had gone to bed unusually early and woken up unusually early, she didn't get tired until the time she would normally be going to bed. How strange. She didn't manage to adjust her entire sleep schedule by going to bed early once. But let's pretend she didn't just say that part. Let's say that normally she does actually go to bed at 8 p.m. And one day, bizarrely, she just wasn't tired until 2 a.m. Well, in that case, it definitely has nothing to do with her staring at a white screen all day, typing moronic articles about the rapture and how clouds are AI-controlled Planet X's invading the planet. And it's also definitely not anything to do with her being restless or preoccupied due to her endless humiliating public failure. And it's not even to do with her just having a slightly different day from usual, like everyone does sometimes. Like, seriously, is there anyone who gets tired at the exact same time every single day of their life for their entire life with no variation? I think humans are a little more complex than that. But oh, sorry, apparently not. Not according to Claudia. And so when she fails to feel tired at 8 p.m., it's not because she's just not tired. It's because, oh my god, our days are six hours shorter now! Which suggests that the day has been shortened by around six hours. Because I want to... So that the 8 p.m p.m. on a normal 24-hour day did not arrive until 2 a.m. the next morning. So, math, 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 next rapture's on May 31st. Each day is now no longer than 18 hours, which means that the rapture is not likely to occur until May 31st, 2020. The next day, Claudia presented compelling corroborating evidence for this, specifically that May 31st happened to be the Pentecost, and that day's vaguely symbolic and stuff. So it sounds good to a Christian who's not too worried about objectivity or solid reasoning, and so this makes the prediction even more likely to be correct. Because science. Since Jesus was the first of the first fruits, which was presented or waved before the throne right after his resurrection during Passover week, that it is likely that the second of the first fruits will be waved or presented before the throne right after being resurrected or raptured at a time which coincides with Pentecost, which this year is on May 31st, 2020. May 31st, prediction 14, and uh, now you don't need me to read this many out, come on. May 31st rolled around, and again, Claudia didn't even bother to wait it out until the bitter end. I think it was obvious to everyone at this point what the result would be, Passover or no Passover. And this is where, finally, she starts to show some signs of defeat. She starts off by denying the death of George Floyd, claiming it was a false flag operation, which, well, I mean, that's how she views basically every event, right? From the sun, to viruses, to locusts, to space flight. What the hell were you expecting? 
The Antichrist, President Trump, as he is the man who made a covenant with men in 2016 to make America great again, started riding the red horse on May 25, 2020, with the lie about George Floyd being killed as a result of police brutality, the whole incident obviously being acted out for the benefit of the camera. Anyway, she decides that May 18th was not actually the date the rapture was supposed to happen, but it was the first day of the period that the rapture could happen in. It does seem that May 18th, 2020 was the beginning of the time when the rapture could happen, but due to the days that the woman or Israel is in the period of tribulation after giving birth, having been shortened, the rapture will not happen until sometime later. But the rapture itself would wait until after Antichrist Trump declared martial law based on the George Floyd excuse and herded the Christians into FEMA camps to turn them into Satanists and started to exterminate the ones who wouldn't take the mark of the beast. <laughs> you know, that whole thing. The red horse event seems uh, to have the objective of declaring martial law and filling the streets across the U.S. with armed military. The ultimate objective will be to start forcing people into FEMA camps in order to get them to cut ties with Jesus and accept the mark of the beast, or be exterminated. The rapture is supposed to happen 10 days after the extermination starts. The point of all of this being that instead of a hard prediction that can fail on or near a specific date, now Claudia's prediction is just, it'll happen a few weeks into the future. The rapture will not happen until 10 days after the arrest and extermination of Christians begins. This could happen as soon as the Antichrist is able to declare martial law, martial law, which may not be far off, but suggests that we are still at least a few weeks away from the rapture. Which is what I mean when I say the cracks are starting to show at this point. As a longtime observer, I predicted that if she even bothered to follow up this prediction at all, it would probably be with even more distant predictions. Even so, this particular prediction kind of annoyed me because I'd already been waiting a long time to make this video, and now I had to sit around for weeks longer to see where it went. But whatever, I guess. I was patient, and we got there. So I hope you've enjoyed the ride so far. Are you ready for the exciting conclusion? Do me a favor, leave a comment with your prediction of what's going to happen next. At least this time you stand a chance of being right. June 5th, prediction 15. Oh, this, this is the last one, huh? You sure now, yeah? Okay, this one's the bloody 15th one. And finally, here we are. The final prediction. It's been a long, hard road, guys, but we've made it. Thanks for coming along with me. It's nice to have some company. Before I get into it, though, let me ask. Did you even realize what a serious risk you were narrowly avoiding this whole time? While well, you were out there screwing around in your innocent little secular life, all worried about small, earthly things, did you have any idea how close you came to being raptured 14 times? Yeah, I didn't think so. Scary, isn't it? How such a near miss can happen without you even noticing, just because you're distracted by the world. Really is food for thought. Best get right with God, because number 15 is the one. But now for the prediction. You'll remember that Claudia discovered that May 18th was not in fact the date of the rapture, but only the first day that it could happen. Well, as it turns out, the rapture won't actually happen until Israel is taken from the nations they reside in and put back in Israel. In my last article on this subject, I came to the conclusion that May 18th, 2020 was the first day on which the rapture could have occurred, since this day was 1,260 days from the end of the tribulation. However, it has become clear that Israel will continue to be fed in the place God has prepared for her after the end of the tribulation, so that those 1,260 days will not end until Israel is taken from the nations where they are now living in and taken to the land of Israel. Which presumably Claudia thinks includes her being taken from wherever she lives, since, as I said, I think she thinks she's from one of the lost tribes. Which means the rapture won't happen until seven months after the first date that the rapture could have happened. I screwed that up the first time and I filmed it, and I'm not going to refilm just for that. Sue me, these predictions are a fucking mess, they're a nightmare to interpret. May 18th, 2020 is 1,260 days from the end. The rapture cannot happen until seven months later, which takes us to December 18th, 2020. 
Claudia thinks, based on, well, nothing, of course, that it's going to happen very soon after that date. By the end of December, maybe early in January, something like that. Israel remains in the place prepared for her by God for seven months after the end of the tribulation, according to Ezekiel 39, which suggests that the rapture cannot take place until seven months after May 18, 2020, and thus not until December 18, 2020, but uh, likely to happen soon after, and thus most likely by the end of December of 2020. Now, you might be a little disappointed here. You might have thought the end of this video would also mean an end to the rapture predictions. That maybe it would end with Claudia ceasing to make predictions. Admit she's wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that without laughing. Or do something spectacular, like throw a fit and delete her YouTube channel. Who knows, but something conclusive. Well, I wish that were the case too. But all I can do is work with what I've got. And what I've got is her just seeming to delay the inevitable failures with longer and longer gaps. Although it's possible I'm wrong. Who knows, maybe come December she'll go through another spasm of rapture predictions and I'll have to make a sequel. After all, these aren't her first predictions ever. Even if it is by far the biggest and most ridiculous string of them. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, I guess my message would be garbage in, garbage out. Thanks again for sticking with me through this, everyone. This was a pretty frustrating video to make, both in terms of waiting months for Claudia to finally take a break, and trying to decipher all this time lag nonsense and what it even meant half the time. As far as that part goes, I've barely scratched the surface here. There's plenty more detail in the text of those articles for any masochist who wants to endure analyzing it. If you enjoy this kind of work, please do consider supporting it on Patreon, Subscribestar, PayPal, or any other option listed at support.logic.com. Huge thanks to all my supporters who keep this channel rolling. Thank you to everyone who watches as well. If you want to catch my videos early and make sure that you can still get them no matter what, sign up to my email list at list.logic.com. I've got well over 5,000 people on there so far and it's really great. And of course if you would, please do subscribe and give the video a like to help the algorithm and I will see you next time.